let us understand what are the different roles as a bi developer we as a bi developer play so if you see we have many different opportunities guys opportunities are uh, you know very very uh, very much widely open for you guys for an example so when you understand or when you learn microsoft business intelligence you can go with step number 1 which is an etl developer so in this etl developer if you see it says the person who works on ssis is called an etl developer in this case so that means someone who is extensively coming from a background of ssis or someone who wants to show that uh, you are working on integration services can go with etl development that is what an etl is because ssis itself is integration services which actually does the etl work like extracting data from different different sources and loading it into different different destinations however we are going to look what is an etl and how does it comes in and plays a major role in providing intelligence to the business in coming slides for now understand that we have a very first role of an etl developer which can be opted and the second role which talks about is reporting development what is a reporting development reporting developer someone who uses in our module ssrs is called a reports developer so the reports developer actually represents the data as i have talked about it in our previous slides basically you are going to hit any of the database not only sql server but most of the time yes sql server because because of the reason sql server is a microsoft product which is actually giving you this platform of bi so when you when any company is going to buy a full stack sql server license they are actually going to get all of these modules along with sql server so with that said sql server is the backbone to all of these different components all right so the reporting developer is someone who works with reports ssrs if you see there is a cube developer or olap developer you can call it as or ssas developer analysis service so analysis service who are, who is involved in most of the time writing uh, performance improvement and developing the cube what is a cube how the structure this cube is basically a storage mode in analysis service so we will see in coming classes what is a cube and what different things we need to develop a cube we require and different different things when we look into ssas for now understand there is an opportunity for analysis service server developer as well apart from that guys you can even be a database developer so a person who actually works on sql server development part in which is going to get covered in our course material so a sql server developer can be also a database developer okay and you also have administrator who can who is actually administrating the whole task of sql server or maybe business intelligence and same is the case with bi architect who is actually doing the architectural design developing the frameworks for integration reporting integrating all of these modules together so six different opportunities we have now now if you are really interested in knowing how much how many positions i would bet this is the only tool wherein you would see more than 26000 jobs just in one country which is us more than 26000 so how can i say more than 26000 this is a live sourcing guys which we did from dice which is a very big uh, uh, job source or you can say job portal for uh, employers or employees who can go ahead and update their resumes or search for jobs with that said if you just see the slide i have taken and captured if you see the ssis jobs are 1976 so 1976 positions are 
available for an ETL developer. If you say, if you see for RS, there are 1,770 jobs. If you see for AS, it is quite limited, which is 718. So that is what I was saying. SSAS is very rarely implemented. It only comes when you have performance improvement. Now, if you see SQL, there are 22,178. So if you all inclusively consolidate this material or these modules, you would see your opportunity inclining towards more job opportunities which you can apply for. It depends what technology, what module you want to strictly focus on or you want to keep your uh, resume open so that uh, any of the position you can apply it for. Now let us understand a uh, ETL. So as I have told you guys, uh, one of the module of MSBI is SSIS. And where does MSBI comes in is basically, uh, sorry, the ETL comes in is basically when you have, uh, let's say different, different sources of data from which you need to actually integrate all of the sources into one destination. Okay, so if you see a data source A, data source B, data source C, so it can be an Excel, it can be an Access, it can be a CSV, or it can also be some other databases. So using this ETL, using this SSIS, we are actually going to load the information into our data warehouse. So what is a data warehouse? What is a database? We will see these concepts in our coming classes. For now understand, SSIS comes in to actually integrate different different databases or different different data sources into one single platform or you can do vice versa as well. So from data warehouse also it can take the information and push it into different different formats. So that was all about ETL guys. Now let us understand what is a reporting services. So if, if you remember it well, I've told you this reporting services actually helps us to represent the data, especially most of the cases when you have the data in the database. Okay, so let's say you have data in SQL Server. Most of the cases, this is what you see. You can actually represent the data in a chart, in a diagram, so that analysis is very very much easier to the business so different different type of charts are there guys which you can develop in reporting services using ssrs so this ssrs will help you actually give understanding of where your company is standing in terms of respective product if it is a product based company in terms of customers if it is uh, you know, focused customer based or customer retention policies. So different, different kind of analysis can be done if you are giving them the required reporting. So reporting comes in most of the cases after ETL or uh, ETL does this, it, it, it is going to actually go ahead and dump the data in data warehousing. On top of data warehousing, you are doing, going to do a reporting most of the cases. Now let us see what is an analysis service. As I've told you guys, analysis service is actually used to improve the performance, right? So if you see the analysis service stores the data in cube. So if you see the, the diagram, in diagram it shows that there is a cube which is actually divided. So these divisions are, we are doing a lot of techniques. We are performing a lot of different techniques to store the data or to improve the performance and on top of this analysis service again reporting services can be configured instead of your data warehousing in order to give the performance so while developing a cube and pushing it to ssas server the development of cube defines how good performance you are going to give so if you say if you are not developing a cube well which is the storage mode in ssas then obviously your performance is not good when you are triggering the report so the the base concept the core concept of ssas is guys to 
have performance in place and for that we are using a lot of partitioning parallelism techniques aggregations methods and you know a lot of translations in ssas we will see those things in our classes now let us understand why and when we go with ssas see basically we can also go with sql2 reporting right so you can you know it it whenever a company is looking as i've told you to have a very high performance they directly go from ssas server to ssrs earlier the case was sql to ssrs now companies who are implementing ssas they would not uh, basically go ssrs to trigger on top of sql because sql data is pushed into ssas and now ssas since it is improved now the rs is going to extract the information from ssas now let us understand the data warehouse architecture so basically the data warehouse architecture is it in this way so there are different operational sources it can be excel whatever you are trying to get it from and you are actually migrating the data to a storage which is a data warehousing or as or databases and on top of it you are actually developing the reporting so guys before i go ahead into the next slide let me give you a real time a scenario where in company face this situation so let us take one of the retail shop example let's say heritage is our retail shop now heritage are uh, you know basically they are uh, having excel sheets in which they are storing the records okay now every day the, there are filling the excel sheet like uh, what customer came in who was he and uh, how many product did he buy and what is his feedback and uh, different different things what products he buy what is the cost he have uh, to the uh, you know to the uh, products how many uh, sales how, how much of sales did he do now if they are maintaining everything in one excel or different different excels from different different location there are a lot of challenges guys if they don't have a database and if they don't have a right business intelligence platform so here is where a business intelligence is going to come and help us so if you see they are lot of challenges one can expect like how how actually are they going to manage the documents right managing document is very important and how are they provide provide going to provide security to their documents anyone can hack or if you know system crashes all of the documents are going to go so if, what if you want to analyze your sales uh, what happened in last year how much of sales happened you would not be able to do, so, do uh, or uh, you know analyze that thing and how about reporting guys it's quite challenging and difficult and now the biggest problem is searching for the document so for an example you want to search the product sales which happened in uh, let's say quarter 3 of last 10 years so you have to go into each an excel let's say a uh, one year excel having 12 different files of each month you need to go into each month of excel files and drag and you know do things so here is where business is confused this is the existing system what they have in place now how come msbi helps this business so let us see that scenario as well so what did we do okay you have excel files we did propose this okay you have excel whatever you have we are actually loading all of these files or system into our database okay now understand this let's say this is our staging database which is actually the oltp or operational database wherein we are loading all of the transaction data coming from files okay now after that how are we loading it which tool are we using we are using ssis so here is where ssis will come in to actually load the information into database and what is the purpose of loading it into database that is very important database you it is actually a querying language wherein you query the data 
and you understand the data so the things which you cannot do or is not imaginable in file system is very easy in database for an example you want to get a sales amount for abc product in year and quarter of this 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 so that is very hard to find in any any file systems guys now when you see it in database it is very easy you just have to do sql query and you will get it very easily so that is the major purpose so some companies as i've told you they can go develop uh, keep it in the cube if they need performance or else they can just simply keep it in the database itself now this part if you see development of cube from the database is done with ssas now after that one can develop the reports based on ssas or one can develop the reports based on directly from the database and this is done using ssrs so if you see in the bottom of the demonstration this part is taken care wherein we are migrating the sheets or uh, files from one platform to our database is called integration and this is called analysis and this is the reporting service now let us see what is the different different concepts what are the different different things we have see for an example if you are calculating any of the sql server or microsoft business intelligence more specifically microsoft business intelligence with any other business intelligence like you have oracle and you have ibm db2 let's say sql server is a database oracle is a database and ibm db2 is a database now if you see this guys uh, microsoft is having uh you know total cost of 25k dollars if you see oracle cost is 40k and ibm db2 is 25k now i am adding manageability efforts so tuning the you know lot of different partitioning manageability efforts can be taken care and it's uh you know in sql server it is inbuilt wherein for other databases if you go ahead and see you have to actually do some more investment now if you see business intelligence that is the major thing still our sql server provides you the whole business intelligence that means it provides you bi tools in build you don't have to get it from a different place but wherein in other products they are actually going to buy it from different different places and hence again cost is going to affect a lot and high availability you see data guard recovery again the lot of things multi core processing is also in built so if you see the total cost it is just 25k and this is the major thing why it is heavily implemented end of the day business is also going to look at what is the investment